We're in Copenhagen for DTW23. I'm here with Brian Capellani. He is the VP of Technology Strategy at Hanson. Brian, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Now, uh, what do you see as the main opportunities in front of the telco sector? What should be the immediate focus for the telecom operators? Yeah, I think the first thing I would say is they need to complete their cloud journey. And when I say complete, um, lots of operators have taken those first steps, but I think they need to fully adopt the concepts of cloud native. So, you know, the work you need to do to improve your DevOps, to actually truly leverage the cloud services and the power that's there. It takes a lot of focus. It does take a plan to get there. Some operators are doing it, some are not. And I think the ones that aren't doing it need to do it because that's one of the pieces of bedrock that you're going to need. Um, I think the second thing that should be a priority for them should be improving what we'll call their commercial agility. Right? They need to be able to improve their ability to configure new products, be able to sell new products and get new products out to the market because I think it's going to be very important for them as they try to monetize new network capabilities, whether we're talking about the future of 5G or IoT, um, but not just the network, be able to bring together services from partners and sort of play in that marketplace economy. Because if they're not investing in these enablers, they're going to miss out on the opportunities. Okay. Now, AI, of course, is the, the zeitgeist uh, topic, and it has a lot of different uses across a lot of different sectors. But in the telecom sector specifically, what do you see as the main opportunities for AI to be used? What, what are the main use cases? Yeah, I think, well, I think you're going to see AI across many use cases within, uh, within the service providers. But I can think of sort of two kind of major areas. I mean, one you'll see on the idea of intent-driven autonomous networks, right? So how can you actually take a product or a service, express that as an intent, and be able to feed that to an AI system that will now use those intents to actually dynamically manage the network? Um, so having the ability to sort of expose the data in the context of intents, I think is really, really important. I think there's a second set of use cases that is really around kind of customer journeys and interacting with customers. So whether that's leveraging AI and you know, looking at past usage on the network, et cetera, to help classify customers, um, or driving out uh, recommendation engines um, to give you a good next best offer, or even a generative AI, maybe sitting in front of all the processes, doing a sort of a natural language interaction with a customer, and maybe coming up with what the customer really wants, a best offer, and then being able to, in an automatic fashion, basically close the loop, complete the order, and, you know, and actually do everything in, uh, in an automated manner. I think those are the kind of use cases that, uh, that are out there. But I think service providers are really looking at, you know, seeing AI and machine learning as what they want to own. So I think they are working with a lot of specialized partners to develop these sorts of algorithms because they think, they think perhaps these algorithms are going to be their differentiators in terms of what they're able to do. So when they look at vendors like us, they want to make sure we can provide them with clean, consistent data to try to feed those algorithms, right? Because, you know, garbage in, garbage out. And I think getting that data is going to be really, really important. So if you've got a good strategy around how you can expose that data, that's a powerful input for them. And the second thing is then, you know, are you built to consume the insights that they actually have? Can you integrate these types of engines into the process flows of the, of the systems that you have? Because they don't want to have to tear out their vendors just to put AI in, right? So having a bit of forethought and understanding how you can integrate is going to be key. Now, 5G, of course, is still a very hot topic. And right now, there's a, a lot of chat about it hasn't, how it hasn't really lived up to expectations. So uh, what can the industry and specifically companies like Hanson do to maybe you know, reinvigorate 5G and help it to reach its potential? Yeah, I think you're right. What we're seeing is I guess we're calling it almost like a 5G limbo in between the major, major investments that they've actually done on the network and the much smaller monetization of that investment, right? And I, I really think for that, they have to start looking, as we sort of said before, beyond the network, right? So how can we start leveraging the capabilities of that network um, in a model where they're integrating with partners, where they're working in a, with a marketplace type strategy uh, that's there? Because, you know, I think a lot of 5G stuff, we still don't know 
what those applications are going to be that come. So the idea of agility is really important because you're going to be throwing some things up against the wall, trying to see if they'll be successful. So you have to be able to get them out to market quickly and, and very affordably and cheaply. But also you need to be able to pivot. So if we find out what you've brought to market isn't actually resonating, how can I, how can I pivot? How can I take it down? How can I fix it and bring it back up? Um, and be able to do that iteratively and quickly, you need a lot of those kind of commercial agility enablers to work. Now for operators to be able to do that, they need to kind of work and behave in a very different manner uh, with very different processes than they have before. And a lot of the operators are still undergoing you know, a transformation uh, to become cloud native, to become digital service providers. But a lot of them are still on that journey. Um, what do they still need to do in terms of this uh, transformation? And how can companies like Hanson help them? Yeah, I think when you talk about you know, transformations, if we look back at the beginning of the decade, those kind of big bang, top to bottom transformations that a lot of operators went on, they all tended to fail. Um, you know, too many moving parts took too long to actually do that. So I think when you talk about transformation, operators need to be a lot more pragmatic about what they do and invest their money in the right places. And we think a right way to do that is sort of put your money into a layer that can allow you to be commercially agile. Reuse the systems that you have, put your money into an, in building what we would call um, sort of an agile commercial layer. So what is the infrastructure that you can use to rapidly define new products, get them to market, make them sellable, and sort of immediately fulfilled. And I think that's what we bring in our suite, um, you know, a catalog driven model that will allow you a consistent way across all those applications to deliver this capability. And then that consistent model is also your data set that allows you to feed these next generation AI type programs um, that you have. So making sure you've got the right foundation and a very pragmatic way of deploying it is what's going to allow you to do the transformation that you need. Well, I mean, that really ties in with a lot of what we're hearing at this show from the service providers about how they are transforming themselves and looking at the future. So it seems like you're, you're right on the money there, Brian. Thanks very <laughs> much for chatting with us today and have a great rest of the show. Thanks a lot.